Well, we are live, and if anybody's here yet, um, I'm going to wait another minute to um, to introduce everybody. Welcome, if uh, to anybody who's already here. Well, hello, everybody, and. Um, I'm not seeing who's with us, if anybody is yet. Um, it looks like it's about time to get started. Um, so why don't I go ahead and start? Um, <clears throat> welcome, everybody. And this is Peter Goldstein, founder of We Did It That Health. And our mission is to grow the plant-based movement to benefit human health, animal justice, and the planet, a healthier planet. And our our strategy to do that is to help us be better at inspiring people we know, our friends and loved ones who we have all alienated and, and been had the frustration of, uh, of alienating and pushing them away when we really want to help them and serve them. And we know that we have solutions for for much better health for themselves and for, for animals and for the planet. So with that, we I am so excited to launch our very first event uh, based on, on the ebook that uh, Dr. Angela Crawford had, pub, uh, had helped us publish, she authored. Um, and with that, what we have is we have our first event to look at uh, stages of, of change, look at readiness actually, and with that, I would like to bring on Angela, uh, Dr. Angela Crawford, and then we'll bring on Cindy Thompson, who's a health coach and, and deeply experienced with helping people. So with that, uh, I will introduce uh, Angela, Dr. Angela Crawford, and here she is. So Angela, <laughs> would you please take a minute and, and tell everybody about your background? I know you've been you have 20 plus years of psychology and, and experience and coaching people and some amazing results. So please tell us about yourself. Thanks. I'm so happy to be here. Um, I'm a licensed psychologist in private practice, and I've been practicing for about 24 years now. And um, my background is as a um, health psychologist, that was where I started and then kind of branched out into working with all kinds of things like stress and trauma as well. And I became really intrigued by the whole plant-based um, message over the last several years because I became vegetarian and then vegan and found, you know, it's been really beneficial for my health as well as helping me maybe avoid some of the family history of heart disease, I hope. And um, I went on to get trained as a lifestyle vegan lifestyle coach through Main Street Vegan Academy and also to do the plant-based nutrition program through Corn E. Cornell. And currently working on a book looking at the benefits of a plant-based vegan lifestyle for mind, body, and spirit. So I'm really excited to be here because this whole topic of how do we inspire others is near and dear to my heart. It's it's not always easy with those we love to have them be open to this positive message. So this is a great topic. Thank you. I'm really glad to be here. Well, yes, and thank you for being with us. And it certainly is is something that we need to explore. And I keep thinking that we're we're kind of creating a, a laboratory for experimenting for finding better ways because I know that w there are better ways. And thank you so very much, Angela, for being such an important part of this work um, and, and for supporting us and all you do with your clients and all you do to, to help change the world and make this a better world for everybody. So with that, I'd like to bring Cindy Thompson on. Hello, Cindy. Good uh, morning, Peter. Welcome, and we're so happy to have you here with us. Um, please tell us about about yourself, your passions, your background. Your yes, please go ahead, Cindy. Absolutely. Well, good morning, everybody. I'm Cindy Thompson. I'm a health and lifestyle coach outside of Seattle, Washington 
with my business, Trimazing Health and Lifestyle Coaching. Um, I, I help people transition to a whole food plant-based diet and incorporating healthy lifestyle factors. Uh, I have been plant-based for 14 years and my interest and passion into going plant-based stemmed from a fear of getting cancer. Uh, I was a, a fire captain paramedic uh, in my previous life. And uh, 15 years ago, my dad passed away from non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And shortly after that, the state of Oregon, where I worked, passed a presumptive cancer law for firefighters that stated that uh, firefighters were at extremely high risk of getting cancer, um, so much so that it was determined that um, uh, firefighters could be covered for workers' comp um, because of exposure on the job to uh, carcinogens. And on that list was non-Hodgkin's lymphoma and also two other blood cancers that my grandmother had passed away from. So uh, not wanting to quit my job and being very fearful of getting cancer, I dove into the research and found that eliminating animal protein and incorporating a whole food plant-based diet would be the best thing I could do to reduce my risk of cancer. So it changed overnight. I was highly motivated. <laughs> and I thought, well, you know, what have I got to lose? If all I have to do is change my food, uh, I'm going to do that. But what I found out is I had 60 pounds to lose. I was somebody who was, had struggled with their weight their whole adult life, been on every diet, lost weight, gained it back, and then some, and nothing ever worked. Uh, and so while I was just trying to prevent cancer, I found out that this was the optimal way for my health. Um, and uh, through that, uh, became an adult onset athlete, uh, mm -hmm. became an Ironman athlete, uh, and through the process, inspired a lot of people in my fire department to the point where I became uh, our health and wellness, uh, uh, firefighter health and wellness um, program manager. And so I started health coaching as part of my duties until I retired and then started my own business, Trimazing. Uh, mm -hmm. So with that, I not only help uh, people one on one with coaching, but I'm also a food for life instructor uh, and help people learn how to make uh, fantastic, delicious and easy, nutritious food. Wonderful. Well, that's beautiful. Thank you, Cindy. And, and I look forward to you sharing some of your experiences you've had here. And our topic today is, is step one, as we try to speak with somebody that we care about, somebody, specifically somebody who doesn't understand anything about the benefits of a plant-based lifestyle. So this is being our first event here, and our focus is how to gauge uh, the person we're talking to in terms of their readiness. Um, and with that, we have Angela with, uh, with the psychology background and authoring our ebook. Uh, Angela, can you please talk about the various stages that we might find somebody in and how we, we would best position ourselves so that we, we can have a meaningful communication with them? Sure. Yeah. So in the ebook, um, the first um, practice is being aware of or considering the other person's readiness for change. So we have people in our life that we we hope will adopt this plant-based lifestyle because we've seen it help us. We've seen in the, the research. Um, some of us may also have ethical and environmental reasons that we would hope to inspire others as well as the health. And yet, you know, so often we find people are not receptive to our message and that can be so frustrating, you know, and we think like, oh, if I just tell them more, they're going to get it. And, and that's not always how it works. So, so I want to just share a little bit about how being aware of the process of change and, and where someone is at and their readiness for change can help you feel a little more successful in how you approach them. And, you know, we'll have other Facebook live meetings as well that will dive more into some of the how to's once you really see that someone is ready. But today it's really all about realizing not everyone is ready to dive into action, you know, and even if your way of change was that you found out about the plant based lifestyle and changed overnight, that is not really how the majority of people change a lifestyle pattern. Mm -hmm. And we'll add in, too, that this particular um, type of change has its own challenges um, that I'll touch on as well. 
So one, one approach that's really helped me to kind of have compassion for people's stages of change or where they're at in the change process is something called the, the stages of change model. They sometimes use a fancier name, the trans theoretical model of change, you know, that sounds really um, very fancy, but, but it's really about where is someone at in their change process. And, and one of the key things that I really took from it, and this is important for me as a psychologist, as well as someone who just wants to inspire people in my own life, is the very first stage in this change process is what's called pre-contemplation. And that just basically means the person is not even yet contemplating change in whatever area. So they're not even thinking about it, necessarily open to it. And so many people, when we're wanting to tell them about the plant-based message, you know, we might be aware of like, how open are they to this message? Have they expressed any interest? Are they having health issues that might make them open to it? Or are they like telling us every day, you know, like, I don't know how you can eat that way and, you know, just have a very negative attitude about it. Our, our approach is going to be a little different if, if they're not at all receptive. And so, and, and just being aware that too, it's rare that someone goes from that place right into action. You know, often what we need to do is like help them, I guess, raise awareness of the benefits of change in a way that's non-threatening. So because often, you know, just to kind of give an outline of the stages of change model very briefly is, you know, people go generally from pre-contemplation, like I'm not even thinking about change, to contemplation where something has raised their awareness that change could be beneficial. Um, so, but contemplation, there's still a bit of ambivalence there. They might be, you know, kind of like, oh, maybe yes, maybe no, and, and going back and forth. And then sometimes the right situation or information will help them then move into preparation, which is where they're ready for change. And, 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 and that stage is important because if we don't prepare for change, it's often unsuccessful if we don't set up our environment or our mental mindset. And then from preparation, if we're successful in setting things up mentally and emotionally there, we can move into action where we actually just start to, to really change our diet buy the right food, you know, have um, our, our refrigerators and cabinets stocked. And then, you know, from action, then maintenance is, you know, the next stage where, you know, just making a change doesn't mean we're going to be successful. We also have to set up our lifestyle to support it to last. And so, so as you think about all that, that that's just part of, you know, what science has shown the change process can be like. And that also let's add in relapse because um, setbacks are often part of the change process too, and not necessarily a sign of failure, but actually a learning opportunity. So, so just being aware of that, you know, you can think about the people you're wanting to inspire and kind of where are they there? You know, are they in that pre-contemplation where they're not open? Are they maybe contemplating but ambivalent? Or are they like right in preparation and action? Like I'm ready to go, just give me the information. Um, we wish more people were there, but but often we have to help them along the way. And and so thinking of, well, what helps? I, I think being really aware of where is the other person at, you know, and meeting them where they're at in a way that's non-threatening and supportive, um, being an ally, not an adversary or critic. Um, rarely does shame change somebody. Um, so if we're shaming them, you know, about how they eat or that we know better, um, that just rarely opens someone's mind to change. But being an ally where you're curious about like, well, what matters to them? You know, where, where are the areas in their life that this might resonate, whether it be health um, because they have a health issue and, you know, you sharing in a non-threatening way about people that have a similar health issue that have benefited or maybe your own benefits. Um, if they're really not open, sometimes just being a positive role model is the best bet, you know, and we'll dive into that topic a little bit later in another meeting. But just being aware, like sometimes just you showing up, loving your lifestyle, you know, glowing with health, sharing great vegan plant-based food. and um, just embodying positivity and health, that can also often be something that would inspire others. And I would add um, too that 
you could ask them to be your ally on your health journey. So if you're eating plant-based for health and they're maybe not open to it yet, asking them to be a support to you can be a first step sometimes that raises their awareness of the benefits of this lifestyle without you making them defensive by trying to change them if they're not yet ready for that change. You can say, hey, you know, I've started eating this way for my health. I feel great. I know you're not yet ready to eat this way from what you've told me, but I want to ask you to be a support to me on my journey. So, you know, in inviting them to do that, one, it helps you to have a better outcome with your own plant-based journey. Um, but two, the people are more often willing to help if you ask in that way. And then they might learn from your experience in, in a non-threatening way. In a, and that may be a seed that's planted for them. So, so those are some of the thoughts about, you know, thinking about the stages of change and, and supporting them. And I will just add for a couple of people in my life, um, I'm thinking of a few friends that, you know, when I shared that I was vegan and, you know, the benefits of a plant-based diet, um, their initial response was some curiosity, but also defensiveness. Um, both of them, both of my friends had autoimmune diseases, and I tried to share a little bit about the plant-based lifestyle helping autoimmune disease and Dr. Brooke Goldner's work. They were a little bit defensive, not receptive. Uh, later on, um, you know, I would just share my own enjoyment of the vegan lifestyle without trying to pressure them to become vegan after that, once I saw that they were telling me all the reasons they couldn't eat that way. Um, I just would share like my benefits and but not pressure them. Later, each of them had something happen that pushed them into the kind of contemplation and preparation and action stages that wasn't for me, but I think our conversations might have laid the seeds, you know. So one of them, it was a health issue where he could no longer tolerate meat and started eating a lot more fruits and vegetables and felt better. The other was she watched a documentary that inspired her, the Game Changers. So, so just being really aware that like when someone's not open, it doesn't mean they won't become open at some point, you know, being patient and non-judgmental. Um, now and then confrontation works, but that's the exception, not the rule. So. <laughs> Um, I went, wanted to add another thing to consider when thinking about people's readiness for a plant-based lifestyle. So in addition to their own personal readiness for change um, that we've just been talking about, I would also add that with eating plant-based, there's also a cultural and societal factor that, uh, that affects us. It's not just lifestyle change. It's not just go to the gym more, which everybody would agree is a beneficial thing to do. Um, this is something that eating plant-based, eating vegan, of not eating meat, um, not eating dairy, this is something that goes against many of our cultural norms, our family norms, our societal norms. And even though there's so much research out there, it's not often presented in the media. So people, they see these really confusing messages in the media, even their own doctors, who many of them did not have extensive nutritional training, give them a message sometimes that, you know, you have to have meat and dairy to be healthy. So we're, we're kind of going against what they might have learned from trusted experts. Um, and so we need to be aware of that and realize, you know, at one point we didn't know either. <laughs> and something happened for most of us that helped us open up to the information and, and really do our own research. And so just, you know, whatever can maybe help them to become curious and often, you know, learning from someone else besides ourselves will be what opens their mind. So if there's, if there's an article that might inspire them or sometimes a documentary or a brief video sometimes that will open the door a bit to realizing that the information we've received sometimes from kind of the mainstream media is not always as accurate as we'd like and that this really has changed so many people's lives. And now that we have, we did it.health, that will be another way to inspire people because they can, you can show them the website with all those numbers of like all the people benefiting, you know, in terms of all these different health areas that it's just, it's amazing. And, and the more people, obviously, that fill out the survey over time, the more numbers we'll have to share that. 
So I think I've touched on some of what I was going to share about the stages of change and also just, you know, being aware of how our, our cultural messages play a role as well. And so realizing those are the forces that we're having to deal with when we're trying to open someone's mind and, and why it doesn't just sometimes happen just like that. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Angela. And I love it. I, <clears throat> I frequently think or wonder actually, and, and maybe you both can comment on this. I, I frequently think that perhaps if we, if we can say something to somebody that's relevant to them, and even if, if they don't, really act on it, let's say, uh, take action on it. You know, I've heard a long time ago that, that people need to hear something several times, six, <laughs> eight times before we really start giving it uh, credence and, and taking action. So I propose that really we, we look at what we're doing and if we get a chance to share something and with somebody and and they're present even though even if they don't look like they're agreeing or hearing it but but they do hear it and and so if we're not pushing we just kind of plant a seed <laughs> and and you know it's uh, i guess along the themes of being plant based we're, we're planting seeds so <laughs> so we get to plant the seed and and that's a success in itself so maybe some of our own expectations of, of what we can do for somebody, even if they're not, don't seem to be ready, if we can plant a seed, and then maybe somebody else will plant the seed a month or, or two weeks later, and then and then they'll see it again later, and, and sooner or later they'll start saying, wow, you know what, I've, I've heard this. So, so if, if we can, you know, lovingly, because we, we do have this, this uh, concern and this caring for, for the people we're talking with, and we do want their best interests. We have that compassion. So if with compassion and caring, we can just plant the seed and consider that a success, uh, maybe, maybe that, that, would be, that would be a step in the right direction. Um, what, what, what do you think about that, Cindy? Yeah, that's absolutely true. And uh, I like to approach this uh, not in my coaching practice and also in real life is that people are experts in their own lives. It's really important to recognize that, that um, they, they know where they're at and they know what they're capable of um, and what they can tolerate at every certain moment. And they will at some point reach a tipping point, one direction or the other. And so it's important to recognize that this decision is within them, not within us. And to be patient with people and to be patient with yourself that uh, it may take a while for this to resonate with them or it may never resonate with them. It just depends on what's going on in, in their life. So it is important to be an example. It is important to share your story. It's important to um, be inclusive. And, um, you know, part of being vegan is uh, to be gentle uh, and caring and compassionate of others, even if that means they aren't necessarily agreeing in the same uh, things that you would like them to be. Um, so being a role model and planting the seeds is important. Um, when a lot of times when I get patient, uh, people that come to me uh, as clients, they are past that pre-contemplation stage and they may, and even the contemplation stage. Um, so they're generally at a fairly good place of readiness. But people can be in different stages of readiness in different aspects of lifestyle and health. So understanding that it's a, a, a continuum. And you can progress through different stages at different rates. So like for me example, uh, my pre-contemplation stage was absolutely no knowledge of it whatsoever. It wasn't that I didn't care or I wasn't open to change. I just didn't even know about it. Um, and then once I heard about it, I, it incited immense curiosity. And so I rapidly went through contemplation stage and into determination and action right away. Um, but not everybody goes through it that quickly. And sometimes we go backwards. <laughs> so um, it, it's 
it's very important to um, plant those seeds. And, um, you know, some ideas that I have for folks are sharing on social media about events or classes or your story. Um, and, and don't be upset if you don't get a lot of response from people. Um, share pictures of the food that you're eating and talk about how great it is. Maybe share a link to recipes. Um, even myself, as a health coach, I am surprised of the people that reach out to me that I have known for years that tell me, you know, I, I've been watching your Facebook and your social media for years, a decade. And I think I'm finally ready of looking at this. Um, it's taken a long time, but I think I'm, I'm ready. And I, it surprises me every time. And, and it just really teaches me a valuable lesson of patience uh, and let people uh, move through this at their own pace that they need to do that. Um, there, there will be a tipping point at one point, but um, being gradual and being supportive and being positive is so important. Um, so having those teachable moments or those opportunities, um, not being shamey or uh, aggressive, um, and, 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 remember where your environment that you're in. So when I first went plant-based, I was a firefighter. So not really the environment that most people think of being a really positive place for making a plant-based change. Um, and so recognizing that environment and being very non-threatening and uh, sharing my why and my story and letting people be curious at their own rate was important and uh, being inclusive and sharing my food, giving people an opportunity to try plant-based food to recognize that it was simply food that was delicious and happened to be extremely healthy for them. Beautiful. Um, I have a question here from, from Rita Mars. Uh, um, she's wondering if, um, if there are advantages in adapting a mindfulness practice um, in one's lifestyle if if that's uh, maybe if they're open to hearing about that, if if talking about a mindfulness practice, if, have you have you ever applied that in in, in your work and how how you approach other people? Yeah, definitely, mindfulness is extremely important um, on on so many different levels. Being mindful of other people, being mindful of uh, where they're at in their readiness, being mindful of um, how you're spreading your message, um, being mindful of basically the temperature of the room. Uh, it, you know, if you notice that somebody's being uh, getting uncomfortable or it's starting to get a little hostile to back off, um, people will appreciate that. Uh, we lose our message when people get upset. Um, so giving people some space, um, being mindful about how you're presenting it, um, depending on the person's experience. Um, you know, some people are going to appreciate hearing about uh, animals versus somebody may be turned off by that. Somebody, somebody may be more interested in looking at the health aspect. Um, and then mindfulness for yourself, um, for gauging your feelings, um, gauging your level of exhaustion in sharing the message, um, getting some rest, whether you're getting fatigued of sharing the message and taking a break. Um, all these things are really important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would just second what Cindy said. That was a great description. You know, in my research with people on their vegan journey, um, mindfulness is often an important part of that, you know, as they're becoming more mindful of what they're putting in their body um, and how it makes them feel. They often, it often goes hand in hand. And a really great book is The Mindful Vegan by Lonnie Mulroth, I think her last name is. That's a really great book about eating and mindfulness. And as Cindy was sharing, the mindfulness of us sharing information as well is really important. What's our intention for the conversation? You know, if we're if our intention is to change another person, that rarely works. Uh, 
So, but if our intention is to share information, to be curious about where they're at and what matters to them, to have a real understanding between the two of us on a topic, that could be a meaningful conversation. So bringing our, a mindful presence is going to make a conversation go better. So I'm, I would just agree with what Cindy shared. Absolutely. Well, thank you. And, and you know, uh, being mindful. So, you, you know, we're, we're so focused on, on the human health aspect of it. But, you know, as we as we read the room, as, as you, you were saying, as we, we look to see, be mindful of who we're talking with, be sensitive to what it is. I mean, maybe the whole conversation has started out with the concern about about the planet, about the environment, or, or maybe somebody's, somebody's just found out about what happens with animals, how animals are treated, or found out about how unhealthy some of their animal products are. So uh, being mindful and watching for reading, reading the room, reading the other person, uh, the opportunities are wide. So uh, rather than probably rather than starting out with our own agenda, starting out with with looking to see what where the other person is and, and looking to see if there's something that we're passionate about that we can add to the conversation and plant some seeds with them. Um, so do you, uh, either of you have, have a, uh, another great story about a specific person that you may have, have impacted as, uh, as, uh, uh, with uh, just being mindful and, and reading and, and with the barometer of where they're at and being able to meet them where they are and, and support them from that point forward? Yes, I'd love to share my experience of uh, being in the fire service and sharing that story and how that went. Um, you know, I, the fire service is very macho, and I was one of the few women in my department, uh, and I was extremely nervous about how that was going to go. Um, as you may know, fire stations do family-style cooking, and we take turns making the meal every shift. Um, so this was a huge cultural thing that I was going to have to figure out how to navigate, and I was nervous about that. Um, and so the first thing that I did was to come in and talk to my crew and share what I was doing and my why. Uh, fortunately, my crew knew my dad and they knew the impact that that had on me. And uh, so that helped. And so sharing my why and why I was making this change was very, very important um, for them to understand what this was about. And second, for me to share that this was my journey not, I wasn't making it their journey. This was mine. Um, and I wanted to also alleviate any fears that they had that I was going to pressure them to change how they were eating. Um, and that I was not looking down on them for the choices that they were making for their food, that I didn't expect them to change. But I also wanted to share how I thought uh, I could make this work for all of us and get their input on it as well. That that was important. So I asked if it would be okay um, if when I cook, I would make plant-based meals. Um, and that, cause that's something that I wanted and to assure them that I recognize how important it is that we eat together as a family. It's a huge team, team building experience. It's a big part of our culture. I don't want it to be separate. I want this to be inclusive. So when it's my turn to cook, I will still cook. I will make plant-based things. It will be delicious. Um, they were fearful because I was um, a really celebrated firehouse cook and they thought, oh my gosh, we're never going to eat any of these great things that Cindy used to make. Um, and I said, you can eat this as your main meal, or if you want to eat this as a side dish and make something with uh, animal products, with dairy or meat, you can do that and eat mine as a side dish. It won't hurt my feelings at all. This is, this is my thing. Um, and so that's what I'll do. And then when it's your turn to cook, um, I'm going to make enough so there's leftovers. So that the next shift, uh, if you're cooking, I've got something I can eat, but I would really appreciate it if you could make a giant salad and 
put the cheese or meat on the side that would normally go on the salad and don't, don't put the salad dressing on it. And so at least I can have a big giant salad and I'll have my leftovers. I'll put some stuff in the freezer and you don't have to worry about this impacting you negatively. And people were really responsive to that. If it didn't impact them, if they didn't feel shamed, if they felt uh, you were still participating in the normal culture, it really went well. Um, and then what it wound up as is later on, after we'd been doing this for a while, we were having a, a, a tabletop training about health. Um, we had gotten a program that was looking at um, diet uh, and firefighter health. And this, this program had an exercise that was really enlightening. Uh, you looked at a hamburger milkshake and fry meal. You looked at the amount of fat in grams. And we were given a tub of Crisco vegetable shortening. <laughs> and given the number of fat grams in this meal, we had to take Crisco and weigh it out the amount of grams of fat in Crisco that equated to that meal and put it on a plate. So what we wound up with was this plate with a pile of Crisco, absolutely disgusting. And if, if you're ever looking for a way to <laughs> talk about uh, decreasing fat with your kids, this is a great exercise to do. We all sat at the table and looked at this plate of Crisco and thought, oh gosh. <laughs> and uh, on my crew, uh, the, mo the most senior firefighter and, and being a senior firefighter is a big deal. Um, he was uh, almost the most senior firefighter in the entire department. He said, you know, Cindy, that's all well and good, but you know, don't you ever just miss a hamburger milkshake and fry meal? I said, well, well, no, because I could make this plant-based. I could totally have that anytime I want, as often as I want. And I don't have to worry about all of this fat. And he sat there and he says, well, you know what? I tell you what, if you can make a hamburger milkshake and fry meal that I like, that's vegan, I'll go plant-based. I'll go vegan with you. <laughs> you know, here's a, here, what an opportunity I didn't even <laughs> expect. And because he's the most senior person on the crew, the other people on the crew said, yeah, 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 we'll, we'll do, yeah, we'll do that too. If you make something that we like, we'll, we'll go plant-based with you. So game on. I said, well, let's <laughs> jump in the engine right now. Let's go to the grocery store. And now that's not an unusual thing. Um, we can't leave the engine unattended. We can't go anywhere without it. And that's why you'll often see firefighters at grocery stores because they're on duty. We're using our own money to buy the groceries. We ran to the <clears> store. <throat> I got everything I needed to make portobello mushroom hamburgers, um, uh, baked sweet potato fries, and a strawberry smoothie. I made that meal. They loved it and it went plant-based with me. <laughs> so it's just a matter of having that teachable moment and having that opportunity and being patient uh, and putting it in an environment where people could be successful. That is just so important. So, um, yeah, so using the, that's an example that I have of how um, I made an impact and touched people just by being patient and making it non-threatening. Wow. That's yeah. inspiring. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm aware there's some questions in the chat higher up that um, I wanted to, I was looking back at. So I wanted to yeah. acknowledge a few of those. Please do, yes. Yeah, so Are one you, early, go ahead. I, I'm sorry, Angela, I, I'm new to StreamYard. Are you able to navigate these questions? Uh, um, or... I went to the comments and, yes. and then I just scrolled up further where Perfect. some of the comments I hadn't seen. Okay. So, yeah, I'm fairly new to it myself. <laughs> um, I noticed one question was about Prochaska's and Di Clemente's stages of change. And so I just want to acknowledge that's what I was referring to when I went through pre-contemplation, contemplation, preparation, action, and maintenance. Um, I mm -hmm. should have named that that was their model, but that's who it is, Prochaska and Di Clemente. Um, Prochaska, who is one of the founders of that model, has a book called Changing to Thrive that is more recent and it really tackles, it doesn't talk about plant-based eating, but it does talk about healthy eating and exercise and and stopping smoking and healthy lifestyle changes. So um, I will, someone had asked about putting the other book in the comments and I 
can't quite see where I can do that, but we'll make sure we, we get that out to you. Um, the other book as well, The Mindful Vegan. Um, Mindful um, Vegan. Yeah. So The Mindful Vegan, I can, I just don't have a place on my screen where I can type in the chat, but we'll figure that out. Um, my, that, the Mindful Vegan. I yeah. Guess. And then, and the author's name is Lonnie, L-A-N-I. L-A-N-I. And the last name is M U. E L R A T H, I believe. Okay, and, I, I got that in the comments. Yeah, and the other book I just mentioned is called Changing to Thrive by Dr. Prochaska. Um, Rita Marsh asks about a person's self esteem, their capacity to tune into self love. How does that fit in? Yeah, so so there's both our own self-love that we, you know, can speak up for our needs and, you know, in a respectful way, um, if, if we, that, that fits in with asking them to be your ally and support on your journey, but also being aware, yes, where they're at. Um, sometimes we think self-love is indulging ourselves in unhealthy foods. And, and so there could be a journey that that person could be on in terms of self-love actually meaning that we nourish ourselves. You may just be aware of where are they at with that? Do they think self-love is just like I crash on the couch at the end of the day and have a, a drink or, you know, an unhealthy meal and that's how I nurture myself? Or are they open to like, actually, how do I take care of myself so I thrive? It's just something to be aware of. I don't know if, Cindy, you would have anything to add on that one? Yeah, that is an interesting example because that that point, that person is really pre-contemplative, right? Mm -hmm. Because they understand the need for self-care, but the method they're doing may not actually be caring for themselves. <laughs> and so... Uh, Approaching it from that just allows, and, and recognizing that helps you determine what kind of uh, interaction to have with them. Uh, is just to inquire: is well, how how does that make you feel when you crash on the couch and you eat potato chips? <laughs> what do you feel like when you or you drink alcohol? <laughs> how do you feel the next day? <laughs> and so they can talk through that and say, well, you know. Uh, when I do that, I do notice that I don't sleep as well and I'm tired the next day. And, um, or they might say, you know, I, I feel fine. I don't have any problem mm -hmm. with that. And, um, just ex helping them explore that something that maybe they never had given any consideration or thought to Yes, that, yeah. uh, they are, they're on the right direction of recognizing the need to take care of themselves and giving themselves some self-love, but the way that they're doing is not, um, not helpful for them. So, um, yeah, I think that that's a great example. Great. Beautiful. Um, Shannon asked a question, what do you do about people who have all the information, but still blatantly talk about and eat meat in front of you? <laughs> I'll let you go first on that one, Cindy. <laughs> <laughs> so I encountered that quite a bit in the fire service. Um, <laughs> you know, most people were really respectful. Um, there were a couple of people that felt that it was their mission in life to really rub it in my face. And really what they're doing is trying to get a reaction out of you and they're trying to make you mad so that they have ammunition to use against you. See, you know, um, you are, you aren't being um, caring and mindful. You aren't being patient. Look how angry you're getting. They want to get a rise out of you. And actually the best thing that you can do is recognize that it's their decision. What you are doing for yourself and putting in your body is your choice. And what they are doing and their action is what they're doing and their action <clears throat> and, and really being respectful of that and then removing yourself from that situation. Um, but d don't get a rise out of them. You've got their attention, right? Yes. You know, the reason they're acting out is because they know what you're doing and they just want to test the metal, your metal, uh, okay. test the situation. Just let them do what they're doing. Don't turn it into a confrontation and lose the battle. Um, that person down the road may be the person that reaches out to you. They may be the person who overeats meat and bacon. You know, bacon, bacon was the thing that really 
um, was the thing in the fire station. Like they would buy the biggest packages of bacon and fry it up so that the whole station smelled like it and eat, uh, they, they would weave it together and then turn it into taco shells. And um, they were just trying to get a rise out of me and, and they just never did. And I, I never told them that what they were doing was bad. I didn't make a big deal about it. I had my taco salad and enjoyed it just as much and just let them be. Um, but the person who is consuming that large amount of meat or bacon or et cetera, whatever it is that's not healthy and not serving them eventually is probably going to have some health effects from that. And you're going to be the person that they reach out to. Yeah, that's a great point, Cindy. And, and I would just add to that for some vegans, especially if they're vegan for the animals, it is distressing to be around people that eat meat. And so just to acknowledge that and, mm -hmm. and that's maybe your own personal boundary that you have to sort out for yourself, you know, obviously part of our inspiring others is that we do need to be around non-vegans and non-plant-based people or else how can they how can they learn the message but at the same time knowing your own i guess sensitivity to being around meat and and knowing that you know if i can't be at the table when someone's eating meat how do i set that boundary in a way that doesn't close off communication you know maybe maybe i don't eat with this person if it's very, very upsetting with me, but we might have conversations at other times, you know, not at the table. So that that's, um, I would say Melanie Joy's work is great for that question. And I would mm -hmm. recommend her book, Beyond Beliefs, which is about communication between vegetarian vegans and meat eaters. So another one to put in the chat, Peter, mm -hmm. um, Beyond Beliefs by Melanie Joy. <laughs> Thank you. Sure. Um, and these you, you do mention at least most of these books in the ebook, right? That's true. Several of them are in the ebook reference section. And I will add that um, Patty asks about one, how do people get the ebook? And two, how can people access this later to share this, this talk? So I think I'll let you mention about those. How do they get the ebook and, and how do people share this later? Yes. So, um, the ebook now is our free gift to anybody who answers the survey question, and um, but it it hadn't always been. So if you if you didn't get the ebook, um, please please let us know. We, we can make it available to you if you would. Uh, you're welcome to email me at peterg at we did it dot health. Also, there's uh, if you have done the survey. Uh, you, you should be getting our weekly newsletters. Um, I, I take the opportunity to mention that currently the way emails are is so many valuable things end up in our spam folders. So if you haven't been seeing our weekly emails, please do check your spam folder. So reach out to me. There should be information. You should have gotten an email actually uh, when we release the ebook that uh, how to download it. But if you don't have access to it, please feel free to to write me Peter G at we did it dot health and it is available and and if you haven't participated in the survey yet please do and you will be invited to download it once you answer the the multiple choice question that we have there for you um let, let me back up just a little bit Angela could you beyond belief uh would you spell the author's name for me please sure beyond beliefs um Melanie M E L A N I E and then joy J J O Y J O Y yeah just J O Y okay yep all right just that's like the word joy yes perfect yeah um Wanda asks how important do you think it is to have a sense of community when you are making such significant lifestyle changes mm. I you know I certainly will emphasize community makes a big difference. Um, one of the things that's really important for you yourself is to make sure you have community, especially if your loved ones are not plant-based. This is obviously a community here in the, you know, we did it dot health um, ambassadors Facebook group. So I would, and obviously most of you probably are in that group, but that's one um, having local groups, perhaps local plant-based groups or, or vegan or vegetarian groups you're part of. That's really important for you to stay strong in your, on your path. And then yes, if 
people in your life are starting to be open to changing plant-based, helping connect them with resources and community, I think is very important. So because so often that's what derails people. The, the largest factor in people not staying with a plant-based lifestyle is lack of social support and lack of community to support them in what is often not a, a, a choice that people around them are supporting. So, so yes, community is extremely important. And I don't know if you want to add on that, Cindy. Yeah, absolutely. It's huge, enormous. Um, you know, when I started, there wasn't a lot of community. There was no Facebook. There were no Facebook groups. Uh, and uh, ironically, my mom decided to change her way of eating around the same time. Um, and so she and I had some community. But this is the reason that I started my business, Trimazing, so that people did have somebody if they didn't know anyone else who was plant-based and help them with community and get them in touch with community. I have um, a coaching community group on Facebook just for that. It's enormous, you know, and they say, um, you know, you can't change the people around you, but you can change the people around you, right? Okay. Surrounding yourself with people that are like-minded and have <laughs> similar uh, interests and, and habits so that it helps support you and you have somebody to reach and get questions. And if you can't find community, make one. So when I moved from Oregon to where I'm at, east of Seattle, uh, I lost my community. There's a huge um, uh, Northwest Veg community down in the Portland area that I was involved with, and I didn't have that here. And I was one day really lamenting the fact that I didn't know anyone in my new community that was plant-based. And all of a sudden, the light bulb went on and said, well, make one make one and it you know if you build it they will come is true okay. um, i created a facebook group uh for my area for people who were vegan or interested and put it out there uh advertised it in the you know local community facebook group and i have hundreds of people in there now that i didn't even know were plant-based they were neighbors had no idea so um if you're looking for community sometimes it's as easy as shouting from the rooftop who's who's with me and you'll be surprised there were there are people that are looking for a community with you absolutely wonderful kathleen koch uh uh chimed in with uh plant pure pods our communities also worth looking at and mm -hmm. nelson campbell who's uh, head of that is a is a advocate of the scoreboard and a supporter of our work uh, <clears throat> and uh wanda huberman um she says this is a big part of why i became involved with national health association uh, she is executive director of National Health Association, and uh, and it's it's so amazing that that organization has actually been advocating for plant-based lifestyles since 1948, I believe. So, way before we I ever imagined uh, people were doing that. Uh, Rita Marsh talks about potlucks. I I know that she has a monthly potluck that she invites the community to, and they're all very successful and fun and get to introduce people to the lifestyle um and uh, what else do we have uh, i i think uh, any other comments that uh cindy or angela you see that you'd you'd like to point out yeah some other great uh, resources out there um are classes and, and because of the pandemic there's so many things that are now online potlucks that are online uh, where you can make your meal and have a virtual potluck with a group of like-minded vegan people um, or take classes. So um, as a Food for Life instructor for the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, you can always go to pcrm.org and find a Food for Life class. Um, it's a great way to uh, learn and to meet other like-minded people. Um, I've been teaching those virtually for the last two years. Um, and I would love to invite anybody who's interested in uh, taking a Food for Life class. I have them regularly. If you go to my website, trymazing.com uh, slash events, you can find all of my classes. Uh, next week, I have one um, be in honor of uh, Heart, Healthy Heart Month, which is February, um, Foods for a Healthy Heart. Uh, we've got 
uh, presentations by Dr. Barnard and some, a registered dietitian, and then I do a live cooking demo. Uh, you get to see exactly what it is that I'm making, maybe learn some new techni techniques or some tips. Um, I don't have Willy Wonka television, so I can't send you the stuff to try, but you get all the recipes. <laughs> and then for those who are looking at uh, starting eating plant-based, uh, starting in March, I have a Kickstart Your Health, a seven-week series. Same thing, it's on Zoom uh, on Monday nights and uh, presentations by uh, physicians and dietitians, great cooking demos and super recipes. You get dozens and dozens of recipes through that. Um, so I'll make sure that I put that information um, in the chat and you're more than welcome to join me, share about that. This is one of those things that you could share in your, on your own personal Facebook page and you just never know who you're going to reach out. Somebody who has high cholesterol or a history of heart disease in their family, maybe they might be interested in taking a cooking class. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. And I want to acknowledge Linda's comment about um, dealing with family who are not supportive and, you know, sometimes even don't want to be in our life when, 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 when we're plant-based or vegan. You know, she shared about a 54-year-old daughter who barely talks to me since she thinks all I care about is my purpose, veganism. And so she resents me and even her environmentalist husband is a fisher hunter. So it's just raising this kind of reality of you know, the world we live in, you know, often is challenging where people are not only not open to our message, but sometimes very defensive about it. But I, I will raise the idea that a lot of that is the societal messages. And sometimes even those very defensive people, when we don't attack them, when we don't shame them, sometimes they do come around. So just really holding you know, that sometimes a relationship, relationships are complicated. I, I do really recommend Melanie Joy's book about Beyond Beliefs for that and some of her um, vegan advocacy classes that she has also because it really raises like, well, what can we do in those situations? They're really hard. So mm -hmm. just want to honor that, that that's very hard. And I think yep. many of us can relate. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. And if sampling food is is a great way to to get somebody's attention yes. stacy anderson uh, commented on, on potlucks and and uh people having potlucks and as did rita and, and so many others and that that is a that is a great way to do it yes and i agree sharing the delicious food like what you shared cindy with your colleague you know when you shared the the delicious healthy burger quote unquote and fries and and smoothie and how delicious the food can be. That's what I found is my biggest selling point is when I go to family gatherings, I bring great food and mm -hmm. people are always amazed. <laughs> yeah, food is a fantastic way to get people interested in plant-based eating and, and coming to from, from a place of abundance is so great and uh, being inclusive. So anytime I'm invited to anyone's house or any kind of a situation, I always bring enough for everybody, not just me, because what happens is people see, oh, that looks fantastic. What is it? I want to try it. Oh, that was delicious. I would love the recipe. Well, now you've just armed people uh, with a plant-based recipe that they just thought was delicious food. Uh, I, in my area, um, when I joined my local chamber of commerce, we, before the pandemic and had in-person meetings, uh, they, they always had restaurants cater the meeting. And somebody once asked, hey, you teach cooking classes. Do you think you would ever be interested in catering one of the chamber meetings? And I said, absolutely. Uh, so I did, I've done it several times, uh, catered the meeting. And there were people that had no idea that they were eating plant-based food until after um, everything was served and I had an opportunity to uh, introduce myself as the provider of the food for the that meeting that night and talked about what it was that they ate and people were shocked absolutely shocked so food is a great way to get people interested in in mm -hmm. eating in veganism and uh, sure. plant-based eating sure and and Cindy there's a request that you share your information in the comments I, I think yes. although it is in the chat it may not be in the comments I don't know yeah I put it in the chat and it looks like um, we did it dot health 
um, did okay. share that, but okay. I will go back into Facebook after this is done and I'll put all of my information in there or my website and how you can contact me and sign up for those classes or even share them. Great. Perfect. Cindy, and I do want to invite everybody. We, we have our, our uh, public group, WFPB ambassadors on Facebook. And I would like to invite everybody. We've had some really wonderful conversations here, some great questions, some some wonderful requests for chats. Uh, Stacy Anderson would like to have a conversation about uh, about uh, plant-based meats and, and uh, plant-based products. And let's let's take that conversation to our Facebook group. So uh, Stacy, please post it in the group, and uh, and I'd love to invite everybody who's here on this call and everybody else in the group then to to chime in and comment and and let's continue. These are some amazing conversations that we've started here. Um, I'm being mindful of the time. It's uh, ten o'clock here, Mountain Time, and noon Eastern, and I expect most people or some people need to run. So I do want to be respectful of that. So thank you everybody so very, very much. I, I love I love this conversation. Please watch for our next one. We expect to do this. Uh, we're thinking every second Saturday of the month. And then of course, we're going to have our live event on June 23rd in Cleveland, Ohio, um, along with the National Health Association uh, annual conference. Um, so please, please join us on, on the group and let's continue these conversations. Join us uh, in a month again and keep keep up the great work. I, I love how compassionate and passionate everybody here is about making this a better world and, and actually being able to impact the people we care so much about because all the chronic diseases, all this pain and suffering is so unnecessary and, 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 and hurts us all so deeply. So thank you for joining us, everybody. Angela, Cindy, everybody in the audience, thank you so very, very much for, for being here. Uh, one last note, please, please do go to the group and, and I'd love to have a thread about your takeaways. What, what are, what, what have you, decided to do differently as you're talking with the people you're looking to inspire. So with that, uh, thank you all so very, very much. Uh, Angela, Cindy, uh, you guys are amazing. You're doing such beautiful work. Thank you. I'm so honored that you, you've you joined me here today. Yes, and thanks for leading this, bringing Absolutely. us all together. Yes, such it was an honor to be pleasure. included. Yes. Great pleasure. <laughs> thank you again, everybody. And thanks, everybody that attended. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.